Hello, my name is Kevin Warren. I am a physician assistant student at A.T. Still University. This is our group project for clinical integration on bacterial culture and sensitivity. We have a 72-year-old male presenting to the ER with new onset confusion, vomiting, photophobia, nuchal rigidity, high BP, temp, pulse, and respirations. Of course, you're thinking meningitis at this point. We do a lumbar puncture. Uh, mainly looking at the culture here, but the cell count's useful too, as well as the glucose and the protein, uh, the blood. We want to look at the CBC and see what else is going on and uh, get a blood culture as well. So here is the uh, needle that you're going to stick in their back to collect the CSF. And these uh, CSF vials, unlike the blood culture collection vials, are not a vacuum setup, so you just uh, unscrew that top and the CSF will drip right out into those vials. They don't really hook on at all. Now here's the uh, actual blood culture collection bottles and those are just like these uh, the little vials at the bottom of this picture and there there's a vacuum in there. The blood will just squirt right in so you can draw straight into those if you're drawing with the butterfly it's usually a little easier but you can do it with the, the adapter that's shown. It's number three on that picture. So there's two bottles there, an aerobic and an anaerobic bottle. One blood culture will always consist of both of those bottles, which can be a very confusing point when they say it's, it's one of two. If the lab calls you and tells you that, you need to know whether it's one of two cultures that's positive or one of two vials on that single culture because you should always be collecting two blood cultures which is essentially four bottles and they need to be different sites so you collect these two bottles shown here from the hand and then go do another draw on the other side at the antecubital or wherever you put the line in and collect two more so you can get good comparison and the reason they do that is because there's so much contamination with blood cultures that uh, it just helps you rule out contamination. And it's also really good if you've got infected lines, you can figure out whether the infection is it's truly, is the patient truly septic or is their line just colonized. All right, so in the CSF we saw a gram positive coccyx in pairs and of course there's no such thing as normal flora in the CSF. Any bacteria you see in there is very bad. Glucose is low because the bacteria are eating it. The protein's high. The immune response. The CBC is showing quite a high white blood cell count. All right, and uh, the gram stain, you can see this note a lot of times. It says smear performed on a cytospun specimen. That is ideal. Next slide I'll show you. It's got some information on that. Um, the primary media we're going to set it up to is blood, chocolate, and a thio. It should grow just about anything that would be pathogenic in the CSF. And here is uh, the cytospin. You'll notice that this, this funnel over here has uh, some to the left. You put a few drops of CSF in there and it'll concentrate it, make a nice small gram stain area, which is actually better, so it's hard to miss the organism if it's there. So you want to make sure you always give them greater than half a mil um, to get the cytospun done. This should be standard procedure at any laboratory. So here's what the gram stain looked like. You can see the nice clearing around these bacteria that supports the uh, probable streptococcus pneumoniae uh, meningitis. They have a capsule that you can see both on the gram stain and on the media when it grows. Uh, Gram-positive diplococci, you'll see them referred to as. Uh, I've never reported them out like that, and I would, I've never heard of anybody actually reporting them that way, even though it is listed in Stanford, Sanford I'm sorry, as a gram-positive diplococci. Most of the time, you're just going to get the generic report of gram-positive cocci, because the diplococci is going to key them in on strep pneumo and we're not certain at that point whether it's a strep or it could be an enterococcus can rarely cause meningitis. So, blood culture, um, so this automated instrument is going to read those bottles that you drew every 15 minutes for five days unless you want it to go longer so this is one of the few cultures where if it's negative you really can't call and say hey can you take a look at those plates 
Um, there are no plates until it goes positive. It'll start beeping the machine and the tech will go over and pull off the bottle. They'll do a gram stain and sub it to some media at that point and they'll call you. So even though it can be two, three, four days since you drew the blood culture, the initial report you're going to get is only a gram stain, which confuses people a lot of times because they think that the, the culture should be done at that point, but it's, all, it's kind of sort of just starting once it gets flagged positive. So this blood cultures themselves can be kind of confusing. You should always draw two blood cultures from two different sites. So you're going to essentially have four bottles for one complete set of two blood cultures. And you should have two aerobic and two anaerobic. Obviously one of each from each site. So the patients admitted to the ICU uh, based on the gram stain and what the uh, Sanford guy tells us we started IV, ceftriaxone, vancomycin, and dexamethasone. And now we move on to day two. The uh, CSF is growing heavy growth of an alpha hemolytic streptococci. And you see the picture down there. Alpha hemolysis is green. And that is what a strep pneumo usually resembles. Looks something like that. It's pretty mucoid. So they're going to set up Kirby Bauer to do some... Uh, sensitivity testing on it. There are other methodologies, but a lot of labs are still using Kirby Bowers. You might get a uh, microscan as well. Blood culture, the uh, instrument is still negative, so these are being checked every 15 minutes, but it takes a while for these to go positive sometimes. So day two, the patient has got high fevers, seizures develop, high fever still, seizures developing and it's not looking good for him. By day three we finally have that CSF culture report back and with the uh, a final version of it and w which includes the sensitivity patterns so the drugs that we already started should be working fine. This is a not a resistant version of strep pneumo. So the drugs are going to work. The question is the patient going to make it anyways even with the drug. So the blood culture, finally on day three, now that machine has flagged it positive, the tech pulls it out, does a gram stain, subs it to some media, and the, uh, they will call you at that point. So day or night, it doesn't matter what time, they're going to call you or whoever is on call for your practice and let you know that it was positive. So now the patient's gone comatose. Day four, we're just now... Uh, got the organism growing on media, which this picture isn't actually it, it's just a quick uh, reminder of the different hemolysis. Alpha is green, beta is that clear yellow hemolysis, and gamma is a lack of hemolysis, the bottom one. So, and then day four, the patient dies. So, day five, the blood culture is finally done, but the patient has already passed on, and the results come out identical to the CSF culture, which is uh, pretty common, and that's about what we'd expect. Uh, there's some little miscellaneous information about blood cultures. Um, if you're suspecting an organism that requires extended incubation, you want to call the lab and tell them to hold it beyond seven days, and you should really be working with an infectious disease doctor at this point for any of these conditions. Here's the autopsy results. Uh, you can see the nice uh, green purulent material all over the uh, the um, brain, the meninges. Um, CSF, remember that the cultures for CSF, you should get your gram stain back within 30 minutes. Culture takes about four to five days for a negative. Positives can take a day or two to grow. I mean, it could take up to five, but usually in a day or two it'll grow. And they will be calling you a lot if you've got positive CSFs. The blood cultures, um, you don't get anything up front. So remember, you're not going to get a gram stain off a of blood culture up front. And always remember to get both the aerobic and the anaerobic bottle. So, and they can take a while. So, all right. Thanks for watching this video. Bye.